Good morning. My name is uh, Juan Diego Boto. I am very pleased, very thankful to the Baltasar Garzón Foundation for having invited me to be here with you today. I am here, I believe, because of my condition as a victim of Argentinian terrorism, state terrorism. It kidnapped my father on the 21st of March 1997. So I would like to read out this text, uh, final conclusions. Dear friends, it is the time to set an echo so that every single moment that we've gone through throughout this conference help us build to set a path and to keep our direction in our purpose of having a fairer and juster and juster reality that will be based on the pillars of tolerance, respect for the other, justice, and defense of human rights. Our thanks to everyone who has been present here for all of you to follow, to be to follow this excitement. Thank you so much for supporting universal jurisdiction. Thank you so much for being involved in the construction of a fairer world. Over these days of hard work, we have had with us widely recognized personalities as well as great legal experts. They have been their scenario, it has been their scenario for them to express themselves. And now common sense is demanding from us is demanding for us to remember those who are no longer with us, those who make all this work meaningful. Now we will give the floor to people who, are, who know what lack of justice is, but also those people who are all the time fighting to have their voices heard. They know how to live with pain and looking for reparation and for justice. In this closing ceremony, this stage should be in a space for victims. For that end, we have reviewed history. Today, in this territory of agreement and a productive debate, we have with us the presence and people who have gone through cases that are well known, and some of them are not that well known, but they have gone through situations, awful situations, and that sometimes due to the nationality or the victims or the perpetrators, the cases have gone as unpunished. We would like to we say hello to Ferenc. He went through the horrors of the Holocaust. He requested justice. And now he's still fighting for that. He's been the promoter of the Nuremberg trials. We also would like to greet David Coso, representative of the Coso family. He's been asking for justice for more than 10 years. The brother of a cameraman who, was, who died in Iran, Iraq, when he was shot by the American Army. Also, we would like to remember Taras Prisuk, another journalist who was with him. Well, David Kosa and his family have been working really hard to find justice. The fifth division of the High Court issues and arrest warrants against the three soldiers. But out of the sudden, the case was closed. But that did not undermine their hard work, and they continue fighting and looking for justice. They managed the case to be open, and now Pedra judge issued another arrest warrant against the um, perpetrator or the alleged culprits. So here we can see a contradiction. So now, once more, the wounds are open, and then the horror of those that have gone through such an unfair situation is still open. But the case of Corso Prosuic are not the one and only cases. Tunto Wanchen, he is the founder of Tiber House in Barcelona and exiliated in Spain, is a great example. Wanchen, regard to universal jurisdiction in Spain, he denounced like top official of the communist country for the systematic uh, 
crimes committed against Tibetans. Ismael Moreno, judge, issued an arrest warrant towards the culprits. However, and then the response, the Chinese response, did not take long to arrive, and then the legislation was changed. So many of those things could be shared by Anna Cantor. She is from the Committee of Support to Tibet. Our welcome, our acknowledgement to him and to all and everyone who are all the time fighting for this initiative of raising awareness and of denouncing these cases. Within the global scenario, the Argentina dictator made Spanish justice to become one of the justice that's the best justice in the world. Barbarie disappearances triggered the disappearance of uh, children. So the president of the grandmothers of the May Square, is one of the greatest activists for the defense of human rights, was with us these days. Her struggle started in November 1977, the year when her husband was tortured, her pregnant daughter was kidnapped and where his uh, grandchild was born while his daughter was being tortured. She had the awful privilege of being able to touch the corpse of their, her relatives. Painful chance, but who made her stronger, who made her stronger and she continued in her search for her grandchild. So in Spain, the victims of the Franco's regime, as it is often the case in these situations, are the actual engines to continue fighting against impunity and the lack of understanding on parts of the state. Spain still is yet to ask for apologies. So we have with us Julia Merina. She has been looking for her whole life for her father. Her father was taken away from her when she was only three years of age. He was shot dead and then disappeared. We have Jose Manuel Amor Carranza. She lost her father, her uncle. She hasn't got, she hasn't kept anything from her father or her uncle, not even a single document. We have Julian Rebollo. He always remembers that 700 people crossed the borders of Europe, and many of them died in the fights against the Nazis, the same as his aunt. He was uh, taken and died in the Mauthausen concentration camp. There are at least more than 100,000 people who were tortured, disappeared, and shot dead in Spain. The remains were never recovered by the relatives. So today, nearly 40 years later, after the death of the detector, nothing, nothing has seen the light. There has been a tacit veto and many do not dare to speak out. Now we have with us today, as a witness of that horror, is our dear friend Pilar Bardem. She has been victim of that repression, an actress and an activist for historical memory. We also have with us professionals of justice that have been remarkable in the defense of the principle of universal jurisdiction and of its enforceability. We have Raul Zaffaroni, Minister of the Supreme Court in Argentina. Also, Carlos Lepoy, the lawyer, as well as Manuel Oye, and Ene Hormazabal, and as well as a legal expert in transitional jurisdiction. And then people who have been working for the defense of rights for many years, such as Alan Cantos supporting or working in the committee for the support of the Tibetan people. We also have Ukuyema Mosame Aluk, victim and representative of many Saharawi families who have suffered the repression from the Moroccan government as well as the administrative silence of Spain. Also referencing our landscape of hope in our scenario proposal for a future which is more consistent with the hope for mankind. We also have Federico Ortiz, president of the victims of either terrorist group, their, he, their voice is necessary to support 
those victims, so many victims who are waiting for a fair response. We also have Pilar Manjón. We wish that she had never been here, but well, the life of his son is the same as the life of her. 200 people more was taken away from them, and then she had to suffer the re-victimization of those who established different uh, categories between the different victims. We also have Carlota Catalan, Manuel Vergara, and Camila Carmillo Cuella, because the young generations are the now and the future, and we owe them the past. A past that sometimes is hidden, sometimes that it is deformed. We owe them the justice, we owe them the truth, as well as the possibility to participate in the reparation, and so that we help them build together with us a consistent society, a society that is able to defend itself from aggressions through principles such as the principle of universal jurisdiction. We have sharing a body. Nobel Prize, uh, Peace Prize, uh, that she has been working for justice. So these principles want to become the present, but they aspire to open no one but several windows to the future so that justice is implemented and so that criminal acts are at last prosecuted so that the perpetrators never go unpunished. It is the commitment that through universal jurisdiction all the human beings should engage with, with history, with the past, with the present, with the future, with the others, and with ourselves. Now I would like to read out a few words by Baltasar Garzón that says as follows. We are the fourth chamber of a nice sky. So we have discovered freedom. We can only see ourselves as flying in freedom. We are the world that will help make justice and justice be implemented in every single corner of the world, no matter how repo remote the place is. We are the sun. We are the sun that wakes up in the morning. We will have, and then we, at the end of the day, we are the engine. We are the engine of a future that will prosecute those who violate the rights of humans and will compensate those who have suffered and who will support those who defend and support and fight for justice. Thank you.